Hey everybody, it's Nathan here with nonstopawesomeness.me and I'm back here uh, in Hanalei Bay because, well frankly, I couldn't stay away. And uh, I've also been talking to someone, uh, having a really cool conversation, and I wanted to uh, introduce that person to you and uh, we can find out a little bit more about him. So without further ado, this is Shanti. Aloha. Hi Shanti. Howdy. So, um, Shanti, uh, can you talk uh, a little bit in terms of like how you got to this place in your life in terms of your consciousness, your enthusiasm for life, like what, how that shift came about for you? It's a bit of a long story. I'll try to make it as short as possible. I mean, uh, you know, when I was a, a teenager, as many people do, you know, although I had a, a fairly decent middle class life, you know, I had a lot of inner, you know, turmoil and, you know, I just wanted to be happy. You know, I went to college, you know, and, uh, and I had a big shift. You know, I, 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 I realized how poorly humanity was treating the planet and felt like I had to commit to doing something about it. And so that's where a really big shift came for me. And as I was, you know, working in environmental activism and starting an environmental group in my school and starting a recycling program and getting involved with other groups, you know, I started to uh, develop a spirituality based out of, you know, a concern and a love for the earth. And, you know, I had gone atheist in my teen years you know, not believing any of this God crap, uh, <laughs> but then developed a spirituality out of a love for nature and, 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 and realizing and feeling all this interconnectedness. I was actually very fortunate in my, my early 20s to have a, a, a mystical experience of oneness in nature. You know, uh, the self kind of disappearing and being one at all with nature. Um, which is not something I tried to do, but it just kind of happened one time when I was out in nature for an extended period of time. And, and that really, you know, has impacted me my whole life as well. So I, I'm going to stop there and maybe you can ask a clarifying question. Otherwise, I may just start babbling. <laughs> no, it's all been great. And we were talking about this a little bit uh, right before we, we got on camera. But um, speaking of nature, what is this environment like for you? You know, as you turn around and, and see the mountains behind you, I mean, what? Oh my God, <laughs> this is tropical paradise. Like, I, I can't understand why everybody doesn't want to live here. You know, <laughs> they're going to have to drag me kicking and screaming away from here. No, but seriously, I, 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 I've been to maybe 25 different countries in my life, including some tropical, and, and uh, I've never been to any place like this. It's really, yeah. really astonishingly beautiful. This is tropical paradise, you know. Now, um, can you tell me what you are excited about these days? Mm -hmm. I'm excited about a number of uh, eco-spiritual healing and activism projects that I'm launching this year. Okay. Um, one of them being a Heal the Earth project, uh, where I'm trying to get people to commit to uh, a minimum of five minutes a week, or, or maybe just five minutes a week, of, of of dedicating that time to sending healing energy to the earth and I have a particular method that I'm teaching for people to do that but if people have experience with sending healing energy they can use whatever method they want mm -hmm. and I also ask I know that that will make a difference in, in, in these times where the earth needs so much healing I ask that people also uh, commit to in their personal and collective lives uh, striving to uh, live a more ecological life and uh, I, I suggest that people find a systematic way to do that, not just leave it, you know, up in the air and open and just like, okay, I'll try to be more green. Right. And in that regard, I have uh, uh, something called the Eco Consciousness Action Plan, which is a systematic plan for how to live more ecologically, and I'm launching that this year as well. Oh, so fantastic. I'm really excited about uh, both of those things. and. Um, I'll stop there again. You can ask another <laughs> clarifying question if you wish. Um, oh, let's see. Uh, now, a lot of people are probably excited about, you know, um, they hear eco-consciousness and they're like, okay, cool, like that, that sounds great. What do I start with? Or what, like, what do I do? I mean, well, how can somebody like start or start along the path of eco-consciousness like today as soon as they watch this video, they can go, oh, I can start doing X. Sure. Um, I, I came up with this idea uh, for the Econconscious Action Plan 
that uh, um, you really need to address simultaneously, you know, the, the, you're, you're raising eco-consciousness, addressing the, uh, the root problems of this, the, 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 the causes of the environmental destruction, as well as the surface causes. You know, uh, like a surface cause would be we're, we're burning too much uh, uh, CO2, putting out so much CO2 into the atmosphere causing global climate change. You know, but there are root causes under that about mm -hmm. how we're living mm -hmm. so unsustainably. Uh, but let me try to get back to a simple answer for you. So I have this, this one sentence that if, that if you apply this one sentence to all aspects of individual and collective life, and I can explain that more just in a minute, it can guide you towards the right path. And that one sentence is that all life is sacred and interconnected. And um, for some people, you might get scared away about the word sacred. It might sound too spiritual or religious. And, and for me, the fact that, sacred, that all life is sacred is a spiritual thing for me. But you can also treat it from a secular standpoint of that, that life is a miracle. You know, 14 billion years ago, there was this mysterious Big Bang, and out of nothingness came the universe. Scientists tell us this. There was one point mm -hmm. of energy and then there was the universe that came out of that. Mm -hmm. And then there was life, you know, and, and I've snorkeled and seen the, the sea turtles here this week. And, you know, all of life really, when you really think about it, is a miracle. I mean, these plants developed to take the energy from the sun and use it as energy and then give other beings energy. You know, uh, so also there was uh, something I read about where um, uh, these people trying to bioengineer something new and better, you know, uh, were messing around with some of the, the bacteria uh, um, and they, they uh, tried introducing it to a plot uh, of plants and they found it, it helped, uh, what did it do? Um, it was supposed to help the plants get more oxygen and that bacteria killed another bacteria that was on the root of all the plants and all the plants died. Oh, wow. And they had no idea that this one bacteria that's on all the plants in the forest is necessary for the symbiosis of life. You know, so we, every little piece is, is, is part of the puzzle. And, uh, um, well, you know, I, clearly it's something you, we could talk a lot more about. Uh, just in the interest of time, yeah. uh, I, what is one thing that most people do not know about you? One thing that most <laughs> people do not know about me. You, um, you can go as deep or as silly as you want. Sure. I mean, uh, I already mentioned the mystical experience thing, which probably most people don't know. One other thing that most people don't know about me is that, uh, you know, um, I graduated fifth in my class from a high engineering background with the, with the highest honors, uh, you know, almost all straight A's, but then never <laughs> one day after that worked as an engineer. I had a degree in engineering and I was very good at, 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 uh, at, at using that part of my brain to do that stuff, but I never never felt that that was where my life was called to once I, I graduated. Gotcha. Well, cool. Uh, Shanti, anything quickly you want to plug? Um, I, I'm going to get a different website for it, but uh, right now these two projects I mentioned are, are located at ecoreiki.weebly.com, which is E-C-O-R-E-I-K-I dot W-E-E-B-L-Y dot com. Okay, cool. So. All right, cool. Well, we'll, you know, I'll direct people there uh, yeah. if they want to check out more. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you. I uh, really appreciate it. And hope you guys learned a lot. That was really cool for me. I enjoyed the conversation. And until next time.